your brother ain't here, you know you're the mastermind. Run, run, Rudolph, Santa ain't far behind. Run, run, Rudolph, Santa's gotta make it to town. Santa, make him hurry, tell him he can take the freeway down. Run, run, Rudolph, wheeling like a merry-go-round. How about it, Rudolph? To a boy child, what have you been longing for? He said, All I want for Christmas is a rock and roll electric guitar. And away with Rudolph, with it like a shooting star. Run, run, Rudolph, Santa's gotta make it to town. Santa, make it hurry, tell him he can take the freeway down.
It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten It's glistening once again With candy canes and silver lanes aglow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Toys in every store But the prettiest sight to see Is the holly that will be On your own front door A pair of hop-along boots And a pistol that shoots Is the wish of Barney and Ben Dolls that will talk and will go for a walk Is the hope of Janice and Jen and mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, there's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. The sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Soon the bells will stop And the thing that will make them ring Is the carol that you'll sing Right within your heart to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. Sure it's Christmas once Christmas season is a time filled with joy, laughter, and memories of old while making new ones. But it is in this season that has become an ordinary tradition, celebrating a not-so-ordinary supernatural occurrence that we celebrate the birth of a divine presence. Emmanuel, God with us. Long ago, in a humble stable, a wondrous event occurred. The creator and sustainer of the universe chose to step down from his throne and wrap himself in fragile human flesh. As the prophets had foretold, the promised Messiah came forth. The Son of God, clothed in grace and love, entered the world. Emmanuel. Centuries before the birth of Christ, the prophets spoke with unwavering certainty of the arrival of Emmanuel. From Isaiah to Micah, their words echoed through generations. In Bethlehem, as foretold, a virgin named Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her, and she conceived. A miracle was underway, for the child within her was Emmanuel. As the humble couple journeyed toward Bethlehem, they encountered countless obstacles. Yet. Amidst their uncertainties, a shining star guided their path, illuminating the way to their destination. Joseph's relentless search for shelter led him to a stable where Mary brought forth her firstborn. Amongst the lowly animals in a manger filled with hay, Emmanuel came into the world, setting in motion a series of miraculous events. From this scene, travelers came from afar 
to express one notion. Oh, come let us adore him. spend some time tonight singing some carols that we know and love. I want to invite you to sing along with us if you know them. Let's sing together. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem.
for your king has come. Sing for the light overwhelmed.
hasn't been an awesome time of worship so far. We're going to continue to sing. The first about the Neela Christmas celebration isn't just that we get to gather together as a community to lift high the name of Jesus and to celebrate what this season is about. But also during this Neela Christmas celebration, we come together as a community to support a critical need in our area. And we've done many different things throughout the years, but this year is a really special one. It's a, a, a tangible way that we get to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ 
to those around us. So this year for Mila Christmas, we are supporting foster care families. And when I say that, you may have no idea what that means. You may know a little bit about foster care. You may not know a whole lot about foster care. But I want to tell you, man, this is such a vital, vitally important area in our community that we can come alongside tonight and help out with. Did, did you know there's a dire need for support for foster care here, right here where we live? Let, let me tell you some stats really quick. Um, did you know that there's only 69 foster care homes here in our community, but there's 289 kids in fo the foster care system right here where we live. In fact, it, it, it's so difficult uh, to find places to put kids in the foster care system that oftentimes workers have to spend the night with them in a hotel room because they don't have a home that can put them in, a loving home to take care of them. You see, this, this need, it, it is critically urgent, and we can make a difference tonight. Here at our church, we've begun to come alongside families who put their yes on the table to say yes, to, to help with foster care, to meet this need in the life of children who need desperate help. And while it does impact these children in an amazing way, sometimes the ripple effect from the support of foster care families and the yes of the foster care families goes far beyond even what we could imagine. And tonight, I want to introduce you to some people via video. Who you're going to see first in this video is the Pickets. And the Pickets, man, they are all in to support this critical need. And they have opened up their home and they have helped our church support foster care families. And because of their intentionality and the support that they've been given, man, God is using it in incredible ways. So let's turn and watch this video, video to see what God is doing. From the foster parent side, a lot of foster families drop out within the first year because they feel so alone and they feel so under supported really. With us building this community of foster parents and a team of supporters who are going to walk around us, we we can rely on each other and we know that we can rely on our church to, to pray for us, to support us, to lift us up. So we started discussing should we uh, take another placement because we were, we were ready to close the doors of foster care and, and move more towards the ministry side but um, we, we prayed about it and we said yes that we would take a placement and um, on August the 10th our foster baby was born but we didn't know not until closer to August the 20th but in the meantime uh, our baby's dad was outside of our church praying that his son would be okay and that the baby's mom would also be okay and that was the beginning of our stories colliding which you'll get to meet him here in just a second. Uh, my experience in foster care was not a good one. You know, when I was a child, it was real, and you know, for me or my brother, it was real bad. And so I was really, really nervous. I knew they were gonna take my son the day he was born. I knew it from the, from the last five months of her pregnancy that they were gonna take Gabriel. And I was terrified that my son was gonna have to go through something like what I went through. So the mother of my child was on heroin the last five months of her pregnancy. And it's the only reason we were in Monroe. I didn't know anybody here. And I was terrified they were gonna take my baby. She od three times, well, twice before he was born, she od twice. And then he was born, and he was born addicted to heroin, and they didn't even get to hold him. And she came home, and uh, I went to sleep, I told her, our son's alive, he's in the ICU, but he's alive. I'm going to bed, because I was tired. You know, I spent five months watching over her, making sure she didn't kill herself. And uh, when I woke up, she OD. Somebody else woke me up and said, she's dead, she's dead. So I picked her up, and she was dead wet, and I put her in the truck and drove her to St. Francis, I had to drop her off, and they wouldn't let me inside with her. And then I was, and I didn't want to go back to where we were, because I was going to, I probably would have done something stupid to those people over there doing heroin with her, you know? And uh, just wandering over the bone, you know, didn't know where I was. Uh, it was hot, and I was, couldn't sleep. 
just went up, walked over the bridge, and I was probably coming over the bridge, and I saw it all lit up. And I just went and sat on the bench, and I prayed after. God, please let my son be okay. I said, I'll give my son to you, God. That's what I said. I said, I'll give my kid to you. He'll know all about you. Four or five months, I got that invite to come to this church and wandering through the neighborhood. I saw signs too, and I just, I was by myself just walking during the day. And I turned the corner and I saw it. And I realized it, uh, you know, it connected the dots. And I went and sat on that bench again and I cried. And uh, I'm just grateful, I'm so grateful for this church. I'm so grateful for y'all. I'm just grateful for God. You know, I didn't ever in my life would I think that, you know, I'd fit in at a church like this. Never would I ever, you know. Uh, but I but tell all my friends, I, you know, I, you know, they, when I tell them that's how I go to that church, they're like, wow, it's a really big church. I'm like, well, they're really cool there too, you know. Every time I walk in the door, someone's like, hey, Jameson, you know. It, got a lot more love here than anywhere else in my life right now. Have you seen my boy? There's no, you can't give up. You can't, you know, I will not give up. You know, my brother told me, just be grateful that it's hard. It's not impossible.
heavenly messengers announced the birth of Emmanuel to shepherds, guarding their flock by night. The skies filled with glorious light, and the angel proclaimed, Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The shepherds, filled with awe and wonder, journeyed to see the miraculous sight. As they witnessed the child, they praised and glorified God, rejoicing in the presence of Emmanuel. Days later, guided by the same star that had led Mary and Joseph, wise men from the east ventured forth, carrying gifts fit for a king. They too sought to worship and honor the newborn Emmanuel. Today, as we gather in this place, we encounter Emmanuel anew. For the birth of Christ is not merely a historical event, but a continual invitation to experience the transformative power of God's presence in our lives. Emmanuel, God with us, reminds us that no matter the challenges we face, we are never alone. In times of sadness, he offers comfort. In times of weakness, he provides strength. In times of doubt, he brings renewed faith. As we kindle the flames of hope and extend our hearts in service to others, Emmanuel helps us to illuminate the world with love, compassion, and joy. This Christmas, may we embrace the profound truth that God chose to dwell among us. May the spirit of Emmanuel fill our hearts, guide our steps, and inspire us to be agents of peace and goodwill in this world. Emmanuel, God with us, a gift beyond measure.
Well, good evening. I hope that you have been blessed tonight as this has been our gift to you and to our community this year as we celebrate this Christmas season. My name is Michael Wood. I'm the pastor here at First West. And again, I just want to say personally how grateful we are for you being here today. I've gotten to meet many of you tonight, some of you for the very first time that you've walked into our church. And thank you. Thank you for coming and giving of your time to allow us to lead you in, uh, in worship, lead you in reminding you of the reason for Christmas. i just love to know. We're going to take a little poll here tonight, so I need a little uh, group participation. How many of us in the room tonight is all of your Christmas shopping complete? You've bought everything that needs to be bought. You people make me sick. I hope you can feel the judgment in all of our hearts right now. L let me ask this. How many of you in here tonight, you hadn't bought the first gift? That's right. Come on. We got, I think, eight days, something like that. We got time, right? No reason to rush. But listen, I, I want to encourage us tonight with a word just to remind us of the significance of what tonight is all about. And as we do, I want you to consider tonight, what's the most valuable gift you've ever received? What is it? Now, for, for some of you, when you hear that word valuable, your mind immediately goes to financial value. You, you're thinking through, gosh, what is that gift that, that I was given that, that costs the most amount of money? Right? For some of you guys in here, you may think, well, man, I know the, the most valuable financial gift I've ever given. It's on my wife's uh, ring finger right now, right? It was a significant investment that I made. Just a moment of full disclosure here. When I got my wife uh, her wedding ring, she just so happened to work at Zales Jewelers. And if y'all could keep this between us, I did get the employee discount. How great is that? It's true. But some of us, when we think about the most valuable gift we've ever been given, we recognize that that gift had nothing to do with a monetary amount. It had everything to do with the significance of that gift that was given. Maybe it was given of a from a loved one that's not here any longer, or some family heirloom that had been passed down through generations. But tonight, I just want to remind you that regardless of what your journey is in faith, regardless of what you may think about God, I, I want you to know tonight that no matter what you may consider to be the most valuable gift you've ever been given, the truth is, is that tonight we have been here to celebrate truly the most valuable gift that humanity has ever known. I want you to understand tonight that Jesus is the greatest gift this world has ever known because it meets the deepest need you've ever had. You understand that even tonight, as Anne-Marie just led us in this chorus of, O come, O come, Emmanuel, that's a call, it's a longing for God. And what we see in God's word is that for 400 years, the people of God had not heard from God. There was a longing in their heart for this promised one who would come that would make all of their brokenness, everything that had gone wrong to make it right. And for many of them, they were hoping for a military leader that could lead with might or a political leader that could lead them on a global stage. For some, they were just hoping for a moral revolutionary that could show them the way. But what we recognize about the uniqueness of the Christmas season, the uniqueness about the gospel, is that God didn't send a military leader or a political leader or even a moral revolutionary. What God sent was himself. In fact, we see that when Mary and Joseph learned that this baby was coming, they were instructed to name him Emmanuel because God was going to be with his people. And so we recognize the value of the gift of Jesus, because this was God himself coming to walk among his humanity in the brokenness of this world. But also we recognize its value because it does meet the greatest need you've ever had. Tonight, I hope that you would understand that God's word tells us that all of us have sinned and all of us fall short of God's standard of perfection. You see, God is a holy God. And the Bible tells us that for eternity, he will reside in a holy place. But the problem is, is that for you and I, we look and God's word says it. And honestly, my life confirms it, that oftentimes we choose to live life our way instead of God's way. And the Bible says that the wages of that sin, what you and I have earned because of that sin is death. 
It's not just a physical death. The Bible says it's a spiritual death to be separated from this holy God. But tonight, I want you to know, for some of you to be reminded that when God sent Jesus, sent his only begotten son, he did it. Because he knew there was a brokenness in this world and there was sin in my life and your life. That being good enough wouldn't cut it. Being connected to a church wasn't sufficient. There was only one answer for sin. And that was for that sin to be paid for. And not just anybody could pay that sin. But that's why Jesus came. And the Bible says that Jesus was, came in humility, was born in a manger... But he grew to be a man and walked without sin. And as he walked and did incredible miracles and showed people what God was like, the Bible says that people didn't like it very much. And so eventually, God's son would go to a cross and he would would die a vicious death on that cross. And the Bible says that he who knew no sin, he became sin for you and I. That when he went to that cross, he was paying the punishment that you and I deserve because we have disobeyed and rebelled against this holy God. But the Bible says that he didn't stay there. It says that he did die and that he was buried, but three days later, he rose again from the grave. And in his rising from the grave, it showed that his sacrifice was sufficient. It showed that he had power over death. He had power over the grave, and he had power over your sin. And the great news tonight is that when we think about Jesus coming into the world for the brokenness of humanity, tonight I want you to know that that includes you. And so maybe you're here tonight, and you would say, Michael, I hear us singing the songs of Christmas, I feel the joy in this room, but the reality is in your heart tonight, you would know there is anything but joy. Maybe tonight you just feel like you've come to an end of yourself and you don't know where else to turn. Maybe tonight you've recognized for the very first time that living your life way has been an affront to this holy God. The great news tonight is that it does tell us that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It says that those who confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, that you can be saved. You can be saved from your sin to be back into a right relationship with God and to live with peace and hope and purpose with the promise of spending forever with him one day and tonight that gift is offered to you and so my question to you tonight is will you receive it will you receive what Christ has done for you the great news is is the Bible helps us to understand that to do that we don't have to go clean our life up for a period of time we don't have to have a great spiritual resume the Bible says that we come to God just as we are by faith And so tonight, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray a prayer to lead you in a prayer. For those that are here tonight that would say, Michael, that's exactly what I want to do. I'm tired of living for myself. I want to have hope and peace and be right with the God who knows me and sent Jesus for me. Tonight, I want to give my life to him. And if that's you tonight, I just want to encourage you in your heart to just repeat this prayer after me. It's not about any magical words that we're going to say. It's about an expression of our heart of acknowledging our sin before God asking him to forgive us of our sin and for us giving our life to follow him. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? If that's you tonight and you would say, I am ready to receive Jesus. Tonight I am confessing my sin, acknowledging that I've rebelled against him. And tonight I believe that Jesus is God's son. And that he died that death on the cross for me and that he was buried and rose again. And tonight I'm ready to give my life to him. I just want to encourage you, just there in your heart, repeat after me. God, thank you for loving me. And tonight, Jesus, I acknowledge that you are God's son. Thank you for coming to this world and dying on a cross and then rising from the dead. Jesus, I believe tonight. I acknowledge my sin before you and I ask you to forgive me of that sin. Forgive me how I've chosen my way over your way. And tonight I place my trust in you. And 
tonight I put my life in your hands and I'm ready to follow you the very best that I know how. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, if you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the family of God. The Bible says that those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So tonight, if you prayed that, if you've given your life to Jesus, the, it, the Bible tells us that the angels in heaven are celebrating that you have come home into a relationship with God. And the angels celebrate. And we celebrate alongside with you. And we also want to walk with you in the days ahead, or however we can, to be of help with you in your faith journey. And so I want to encourage you tonight, if you're here, and you made that decision to follow Jesus, or maybe tonight, just over the night, you've realized that your relationship with God is not where it needs to be, and tonight you're ready to recommit your life to the Lord. Maybe tonight you just say, Michael, there's some junk going on in my life, and I could really, really value a conversation with a pastor, someone to pray with me, someone to help me navigate what I'm walking through tonight. I want to encourage you, if that's you tonight, you're going to see a QR code on the screen. I want to encourage you right now in this moment, you just take your phone out. That's right. A preacher just gave you permission to take your phone out, right? Take your phone out and scan that QR code, and you're going to have an opportunity to respond in one of those ways. Tonight, I prayed to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Tonight, I rededicated my life, recommitted my life to Jesus. Tonight, I'd love to talk with a pastor in the near future. We'd love to have the opportunity to serve you in the days ahead. We're almost done tonight, but I believe, I believe that the best is still to come. Let me pray for us and we'll wrap up our time together. Father, what a special time we've had tonight. So thankful for this gathering. And I believe, Lord, that you have every person in this room tonight for a reason. Thank you for all the joy that comes with the Christmas season, the traditions, the festivities. We're grateful for tonight to realign our hearts that this is about a celebration, God, that you have come. You have come to save us from our sin. And you have been victorious in it. So we celebrate you tonight. You are an awesome God who has done awesome things. And you will reign forever. In Jesus' name, amen. The sin-sick world needed saving, and though we tried and tried, we could not save ourselves. But God, in His infinite wisdom, provided a way, a way not mapped out by human hands, but divinely directed to change the course of history. Through His Son, Jesus, salvation made its way from the thrones of heaven to the throes of humanity, arriving not in splendor, but in simplicity as a baby. This was not entirely what was expected, but it is exactly what was needed. Divinity and call, creator of the world, breathing our air. Behold, what light has come, and the dark cannot contain it. The Savior of the world is finally.
at Christmas, we stand in awe and worship. Not to simply sing happy songs or exchange humble gifts, but to remember why Jesus was born. For in his birth, he set course to the cross, and that cross casts an eternal light on the shadows of this world. Light that makes the darkness flee, the enemy retreat, and death itself reverse. We worship today because salvation is ours through Christ Jesus, the baby born to God, born to save the world, and overcome the grave.